Discovery Channel launched to the tune of a billion dollar investment. Wow. 18 hours a day. Yeah. I got the six hours a day for $365,000 a year. Wow. And, and I mean, it, it was an amazing deal, but then there was other channels with the same problem. Nashville Network, Lifetime was 22 hours a day. Nashville, we started picking up time all over and we went international, went into Europe, went into Latin America. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another live episode of Beast Nation. It's your host today, Brad Blazer. A lot of people have called me many things over the years, but a lot of people refer to me as the Robin Hood of knowledge and information. And the reason for that is I bring tremendous thought leaders onto our platform, and I get to share what has made them successful with our community. Today's guest, folks, is no other it is a person that is accredited with being the father of the infomercial. He was on Shark Tank. He's written a number of books like Act Now, How I Turn Ideas into Million Dollar Products, How to Put a Shark in Your Tank, and also, of course, The Mentor to Millions. You, of course, remember this theme from the hit TV show Shark Tank. It is no other than Kevin Harrington. Kevin, welcome to Beast Nation, brother. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Brad. Thank you. Great to be here. I know we got a lot of great stuff to talk about and including, uh, you know, a, a big uh, event that's, that's coming up. So uh, let's do it. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I always like to get started with what I refer to as people's backstories, because I think that growing up, you know, there's usually what I call the revelation, an aha moment in life that really sets you up for success. And my team did a little background work on, uh, you know, getting to know you a little bit better. You grew up in Ohio, but do you remember what was your first job growing up as a kid? So, um, well, when, when I was real young, I've actually worked in an ice cream store, but that was just, uh, you know, really, it was just, just something to do. I was, I think, uh, 12 years old or something doing that. But my first job was, was actually, you know, selling a safety high chair. And um, uh, this, this, in, in, and this was back in the 70s. So I graduated high school in 1975. And, and so I was doing this um, while I was in high school. And, and so I'd finish school and go home, do my homework, and then go out on the, on the town and, and sell safety high chairs. And, and it sold for $300 back in the 70s. So this is, this is in today's world, well over $1,000. But this was a chair that was used in Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. And, and it, it, it's hard to describe it, but it was, it, the baby sat in the middle of this, this um, kind of a, um, well, it, it really wasn't a, a small high chair. It, it had a, a larger footprint and it, and it was suspended in air. So the baby could not climb out of it, couldn't slip out of, couldn't slip out of it, climb out of it or tip it over. And, 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 and so, um, that was my first job selling these. And I, I was, I was selling three, five, seven of these a week as, as a, as a young kid. Wow. <laughs> I mean, now were these people that had expressed interest in this product or were you out just door knocking? So the, the, the company had put a little box in, in the middle of the mall and said, having a baby win a, a, a $1,000 gift box. Okay. And people gotcha. would put their name in there. And then they, of course, everybody would win the thousand dollar gift box because I was the guy that went out and, and gave them this gift box. We, we gave them an insurance policy for the baby and, and some coupons for this and some samples. And we had this little box of goodies for the, the for the pregnant woman. And, and, you know, Hey, we give them a million dollar life insurance for their baby, but it was good for one year. And, this, you know, this was a lost leader for the insurance companies because, you know, the, the kids weren't dying typically in that period of time. So we gave them this big value that got me in the door. And when I knocked on the door, I said, I've got your box here. Yep. You know, I, I'm, it's going to gonna take me about three to five minutes to give you what's in it so I can explain it. And all I ask before I come mm -hmm. in is I need one minute to tell you the company that's behind this and why we're giving you this box. It's called Baby Tenda, a safety high chair product. And so I give them the box, got to know them. And, and then at the end, I, I would talk about the safety of their children, et cetera, et cetera. 
I was closing 80%. It was, it was, it was powerful. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Now, one thing that I personally believe in, and it's unfortunate that a lot of people also don't believe the same thing is that in life, you have to find someone that can be a coach, can be a mentor, can really help get you to the next level. While you were doing this, understand that you were introduced to kind of an experienced guide, a mentor. Do you remember who that was in your life that really took you to the next level? Well, I mean, the, the particular person at Baby Tenda was a, was a gentleman named Bruce Haskins, I think was his name. Okay. He, he was one of the greatest salespeople I ever met. Even to this day, he was a one-call closer. You know, he, he, he had been sure. in property and, and, and condo, you know, uh, timeshare sales. And mm -hmm. timeshare business is a business where if, if you, when they're at their emotional peak is when they're yeah. going to buy. If they don't buy then, they tell you, they'll call you the next day. Never, yeah. ever happens, okay? So uh, here I am. I've got these folks for two hours in their home at an emotional peak. And yeah. it wasn't until... I, I would come back from, from a sale and, I, and, and, and Bruce would say, what happened? I said, oh, well, it, I closed it. They're like, well, they're going to sign it tomorrow. And he's like, well, <laughs> Kevin, they're not going to sign it tomorrow. He's like, oh, yeah, they told me they just needed to overnight. Think about it. Write me the check in the morning. He's like, 100% they're going to walk away. And, and it wasn't until I really listened to my mentor mm -hmm. that I found that when I let people off the hook, my closing rate was 30%. When yeah. I closed on the on a one call close, it was 80%. And yeah. Bruce taught me, he taught me how to sell. Yeah. And, and from there, I started a heating and air, a driveway ceiling business. Then I started a heating and air conditioning company when I was in college. My dad, I'm one of six kids. And my wow. dad, was a, he was a bartender who got saved up some money to open up his own bar. But I was the fourth child. And he's like, Kev, he said, Listen, the bar business is we're, we're, we're struggling, keeping alive, but I don't have your college education money. He's like, you know, so you got you need to pay for your, your college, your books, your tuition, your room, your board, your car, your insurance, your health, your this. It's a lot of money for an 18 year old kid back in the 70s. Right. So um, I, I bought new homeowner lists, people that had just bought a new house. I called them up and I had telemarketers and we said, hey, congratulations. We have we're going to come out and help you out. What do you mean? Well, hey, that furnace you have is a dangerous appliance. We're going to do a safety yep. check, make sure the flu's open, and we're going to clean it absolutely free as a welcome gift to the neighborhood. Well, we were getting 20 new customers a week while I'm going to college, you know, and I, had, I ended up at, after one year, we built that into a $5 million business with 25 people and six trucks going out. So my sophomore year, what did I do? I quit college. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't do both. It was crazy. And uh, so, I mean, I'm going to tell you about the aha moment because you mentioned that, Brad. Uh, so I, I, I had a nice business with heating and air, but, but think about this. It's labor oriented. It's geographic. You're never gonna, I'm not going to be installing furnaces in, in sure. Los Angeles and New York and Texas. It's a local business. Yeah. So I sold it to one of my employees and and I was sitting there with a pocket full of cash, bought a house, and, and I order cable television, mm -hmm. and I get 30 channels of cable. And this is the early 80s now, all right? So, um, and I'm going through, and, and prior to cable, if Brad, I think you, you remember the days, you remember when there was just five channels or four channels? We didn't have ESPN. <laughs> right, okay? So, I, I'm going through my 30 channels, ESPN's 24 hours of sports, HBO, 24 hours of movies, CNN yep. news. I get to the last channel, it's Discovery. And I'm like, what's this? Oh, there's nothing on. I mm. called the cable company, said, I mean, Discovery's not working. They said, oh, it's the newest channel. That's why it's channel 30. Yep. It's an 18 hour a day channel. They don't have a budget for 24 hours a day. That's when the aha moment hit. I said, well, what are you doing with that six hours? They said, nothing. I said, nothing. I said, I'm going to fill it and pay you some percentage of what I generate from it. And they're like, hey, come on down. Let's talk. We talked. I started putting products in there. We, 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 Arnold Morris, Jack LaLine and the Juicer, Tony Little Fitness, George Foreman, you name it. Boom. We were doing hundreds of millions and then billions. And that, that was the aha moment because I cut a contract deal with Discovery 
for a, a multi-year contract for the exclusive rights to that six hour block. Now let, let me explain that, why that's so powerful. Discovery Channel launched to the tune of a billion dollar investment. Wow. 18 hours a day. Yep. I got the six hours a day for $365,000 a year. Wow. And, and I mean, it, it was an amazing deal, but then there was other channels with the same problem. Nashville Network, Lifetime was 22 hours a day. Nashville, we started picking up time all over. Then we went international, went into Europe, went into Latin America, um, went over to the Middle East and, and opened up in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, we, we built a global business, went public, and did it created uh, a, a multi-billion dollar uh, asset. Yep. You know, that's one of the things that I think you recognize from. It's taking assets you own and it's figuring out how to make them virtual, how to take them global, because obviously so many people think small, they think local or they think here in the U.S. when really today with the technology we have, your customer base can be all around the globe. You know, and of course, Absolutely. that's fantastic. Now, you know, I think most people that recognize you recognize the name certainly associate you largely with Shark Tank, right? You know, being alongside the other sharks. Of all of the investments you've made on Shark Tank, Kevin, which one turned out to be the best investment for you as a shark? And then the second question I have tied to that is which one perhaps are you most passionate about? Doesn't necessarily have to be the one that's made the most money, but which one are you the most passionate about? Well, okay, so the so the, the, this is good an interesting story. Being when I was on Shark Tank, we we had you know I did 175 pitches, all right, and took a pitch after pitch after pitch, a year you know in the first seasons, um, and and I was having a lot of fun. But the crazy thing is, is that Shark Tank's a TV show made you know it's a show made for television, right? It has to be entertaining. If you're just looking at I mean, if you were just putting investors in front of in, in deal flow, it, mm -hmm. it, it's a little bit different. We had to understand, we had to entertain a little bit, right? But so for example, crazy product, a woman comes out, she, she says, look, she says, you know, I have a cat product and people that have cats, they spend thousands of dollars on, on kitty litter. And yeah. what if I told you I have a product that will eliminate the need for kitty litter, save you thousands of dollars. It's, wow. I'm gonna, it's solving a problem yep. and much healthier for you, et cetera. And she says, let me show you this. And she shows a video and this cat runs into the bathroom, jumps on the toilet, goes to the bathroom and jumps off the toilet. It's called City Kitty. And I'm like, the whole place just cracked up, the cameraman, everybody. And, and she says, and by the way, if you've ever seen the movie, Meet the Fockers, we use this product to teach the cat for Robert De Niro to jump on top of the toilet. Now, I didn't love the product. It was a, a tray that went on your toilet. You threw the litter box away and taught the cat how to jump on the toilet. There was a little litter there. And each week a ring came out until it was, there was a little bit of litter, then less litter, then less litter, then no litter. Now just jump on the toilet, sort of forced training. And so we, we, I, the reason I invested in that deal, I said, Shark Tank is, this is in the early seasons. It's new. This is going to go viral. I, we sent it to Good Morning America. They said, we want it. The Today Show, we want it. Wendy Williams, we want it. The View. I took it all. I did all these appearances and, and put this thing on the map. Um, and, and, and so and we brought the, the, the founder of the company. We took her to trade shows. We got it into Walgreens on end caps. Make a long story short, it made millions and millions of dollars. It was huge. And so... I love that product, but it, you know, it, it's not something that, that everybody is saying, yes, uh, you know, that, that's, that's been out, you know, for, uh, it, it, people don't necessarily remember City Kitty. Now, those that watch right. that are real diehard Shark Tank fans, they, they love that segment. It's one of the top segments ever, ever done. But I do want to tell you about, you said, what's, what's kind of near and dear to me? And, and so what happens is this, yes, we get pitched on Shark Tank, but then, People that see me on Shark Tank, they, they, but didn't get a chance to go on the show, I get a hundred of those a week still. To this day, four to 500 a month, people coming to me to, to, to be involved with their business. So seven years ago, a company came to me, I've been drinking, I drink one of these every single day, it's called Celsius. And I don't know if you, have you heard of this product? Sure we drink, drink it in the house, yeah, sure, we got okay. some, yeah, you bet. Now, Seven years ago, the guy says, hey, look, we want a shark on our board. And so I come down, meet with them. They're in Boca. I'm in St. Pete. 
is a startup company. Company had, you know, a, a they, they were a 22 cent stock, but it wasn't even listed. It was pink sheet, no, no volume. It had um, a couple million dollar value, the company. Yep. Yep. And if you follow Celsius, we've now grown this to 175,000 locations around the world, wow. $4 billion yep. from a couple million. That is one that I love to talk about because yep. uh, we brought a lot of create stuff to the table with, you know, Celsius competes in a world against Red Bull and Monster and all these big, big companies. But guess what? We're number two on Amazon, way ahead of all of these others outside of Red Bull. Why? Because we have direct to the consumer strategies. And Brad, this is some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about when we come to, to your event, yep. uh, in the, you know, coming up here. And I know we'll talk about that in a bit, but we implemented Instagram influencers and, and funnels and all kinds of great stuff. So and it, 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 I love being involved with, with great entrepreneurs and, and that's what it's all about. Absolutely. You know, it's so important. People don't recognize the importance of a brand. And that's really at the end of the day, what it comes down to, like you said, you know, Red Bull, they're known, they're involved in sporting events. They I, of course, it went up, you know, from uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the spacecraft. And, uh, you know, of course, you got the other ones, Monster. And we're very familiar with Celsius. Yeah, we drink it a lot down here, too. You know, one thing I want to ask you, because in my book on the Wings of Eagles, uh, where I share basically stories and messages from some great thought leaders, and I've actually met some of the other sharks. Kevin O'Leary, I've had the pleasure of uh, hearing him speak a couple times. I was, yeah. of course, in uh, Damon's office shark group up there in New York uh, with a good friend of mine. Uh, but of all the sharks that you were on the show with, or perhaps no off the show, is there one that stands out in your mind as just a real great serial entrepreneur? And what's the reason that makes him so great? Is it business acumen? Is it just the mindset of just going forward and figuring it out after he makes the commitment as a, as a business owner? I'm sure other than yourself, there was perhaps one other shark or others that are on the show today that really stands out to you. So yeah, let me let me I'll analyze a, a few of the sharks. And by the way, I, I love all of them. Uh, we, I'm close uh, uh, to to them. And um, Barbara Corcoran is is the, is the sweetest shark. I say she she wrote a, uh, a a quote for my last book just a, you know a few months ago. And so we you know we're, we're, we stay in touch. Um, Barbara, she's she's a grassroots entrepreneur. She built a real estate business in New York. Sure. Sued Donald Trump. He, she sold yep. a big piece of real estate for him and then got screwed and didn't get paid. So she's, she's a, she's a tough, she's a tough one. Okay. But she's yeah. funny she's tough and she, she loves deals. She, she's, so she sold her real estate business and now she loves investing in these businesses mm -hmm. and startups. And so um, she's different than O'Leary. O'Leary comes at it more as an investor. You know, Barbara looks at the entrepreneur and gets excited. O'Leary, he doesn't care about the entrepreneur. He's like, in fact, he says, I want to do this deal. And the first thing I want to do is fire you. Okay. It's like, okay, Kevin O'Leary, he's a tough guy, but he actually, he's a, he's a sweetheart off, off the show. I mean, uh, the last time I saw him, I having a couple of glasses of wine. He's got his own wine, by the oh, way, no, Kevin O'Leary no. wine, right? Um, and, um, you know, Damon, he's the hip hop guy. He's got certain things that he loves. Um, and and, and uh, Herchevik, Herchevik is probably very niched because he's a security, you know, his company is in internet yep. security and it's, it's high level corporate. So, I mean, yes, he's very successful. And, and I mean, he's got a 50,000 square foot home up in Toronto, right? So uh, and I, I think he's worth hundreds of millions. But um, I, I just think when I, when I look at the Sharks, um, I, I, I love the entrepreneurial spirit. But I, I, I'll say that between Barbara and Lori, they're, they're probably really good at doing those transactional kind of deals, you know? And, mm -hmm. and they love hanging out with the entrepreneur where, where I think an O'Leary sometimes just looks at it as cash flow, And, yeah. you know, he, he, he almost looks at an entrepreneur as a liability in some cases. You know? So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, one thing that I also know about you that my team did a little bit of research on is 
there of a peer to peer network for entrepreneurs. Can you speak about that a little bit and kind of why you got involved in the entrepreneurs organization? Yeah. So I, I was sitting in 1987 with a couple folks, um, Ted Leonsis, who owns the Washington Capitals. He, he was number two at AOL. Mm -hmm. Ted was an entrepreneur. Um, Michael Dell from Dell Computers and, and another guy by the name of Vern Harnish were sitting out in Los Angeles. And we're like, hey, guys, we're a bunch of young entrepreneurs. Um, you, you've had some problems, Kev, haven't you? And, you know, you, you know how to raise money and I need some help on this. We're like, you know, we should form an organization. And so we originally called it the YEO, the Young mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs Organization. And I'm a co-founder of that. And, and, and we said, you got to be under 40 to be young, okay? And so when we all got up to like our high 30s, we said, you know what? We better change the name. Let's call it EO, the Entrepreneurs Organization. We don't have to be young to be an entrepreneur. So we changed it. You had to be under 50 then. And I, I don't know if they've changed yep. it since, but EO is the world's largest. Uh, it's a nonprofit uh, uh, entrepreneurial organization. We're in mm -hmm. uh, 55 countries, 160 cities around the world. It's, it fuels entrepreneurship everywhere. And when you join EO, and, and there's 200, um, you know, uh, I say 200, probably closer, maybe 175 chapters yep. around the world. When If you're in New York, you join a chapter. If you're in Tampa, you can join a chapter. If you're in, in Los Angeles, every major city, Bombay, India, Shanghai. When I went to Shanghai last, put out a little note to the EO members, 20 of them met me for lunch and I needed a phone center, fulfillment center, customer service. I need, boom, got it all solved. Mm -hmm. And so you get mentors when you join EO. It's a powerful, powerful organization. I'm proud to be one of the co-founders. Fantastic. You know, you hit upon something there as you were explaining that, that I want to dig a little deeper in because uh, as I was watching a podcast that you were on, or maybe it was just a, a something that you did, you were talking about some of the best business decisions decisions that you've ever made that literally allowed you to just take your business to the next level. And I think one of them was you made one of the decisions to actually take your business virtual, right? And, and you just kind of touched upon that a little bit. And I think what's happening today with COVID, people, of course, working remotely, people that are doing Zooms is we're now all learning to adjust in a virtual environment. What's the advantage to you and also to entrepreneurs that have not yet done that? Why was that one of the biggest decisions for you? Well, going virtual and digital, right? I mean, it's, let's put it this way. Here I was, and, and I started in the early 80s, built, you know, the, the billions of dollars. It was as I owned as seen on TV.com, as seen on TV yep. Inc. We, we had thousands of products in over 100 countries. But what was happening? Television viewership was plummeting. I mean, it, it, I don't know if you know this, Brad, but TV viewership is down by 60% in the last mm -hmm. eight years. And why? Where are the people? They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. <laughs> you know, they're on, yep. they're on Clubhouse. <laughs> you know, okay. So um, I saw the handwriting on the wall <laughs> and uh, I said to myself, I got to do something. So literally eight years ago, and I saw it, I, I, I built this business with Pete and then I saw it just at yep. the top. It was a bell-shaped curve coming down the other side. Why? L lower TV viewership and Amazon was coming in competing against me because they were selling everybody's product, right? So in fact, a lot of the products Amazon was selling were knockoffs of the real products that I had. And I had one item that had 22 knockoffs. We had to legally you know, go after 22 people. But the bottom line is this, is that I said, we got to go, we got to go digital. We got to go virtual, sold it all, sold all my assets to a public company, cashed out, came out great and focused in the area of digital. So I don't launch products on TV anymore. I, I launch it with funnels on Facebook and Instagram and all the kind of ways that, that we, we do today. My business is virtual. Um, last year I was on the road 250 days, you know, it's, wow. it's a different world today. I mean, you know, I know uh, events are, are coming back and, and, and we got a great one we're going to be talking about here in a bit. But the bottom line is, is that it people, the, what we're doing right now, Brad, is, you know, 
I had a last week. I had a day. I finished at eight o'clock at night, and I was just like my, my wife had dinner waiting for me. Uh, I have a, I'm work out of a home office, but I also have a studio here in the area. But she says, "Oh my, she, she just looked beat." I said, "I was. I've been on eleven hours of Zoom calls today. Okay, in one day, right? I mean, it's that's <laughs> now, but I'm touching." everyone in the world, you know, think about that, right? So it's, it's exciting to be able to, for me, I can choose what I want to do in this arena and the opportunities are endless. So I think this, the shift towards virtual and digital has been a, a, a big thing for me. And, and we also, we do a lot of business with the shopping channels. For example, we're still selling to QVC and HSN, the, the, the show host, I mean, the, the talent doesn't even go to the networks anymore. They do it just like we're doing right now. So the world has adapted, and I think you're going to see things more efficient going, going forward. Sure, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. I know Fran Tarkenton, who was very involved, of course, with Guthy Ranker, that was, of course, uh, involved in those early days. You know, when you look at... products you've sold, um, has there been something in business, maybe an idea or something that you were wanting to do that you did not take action on that you now regret? Do you have any regrets on things maybe that you passed on or that you didn't get wow. involved with? Very uh, good question because it just, it, it hit me again yesterday. So we, we did, uh, I'll tell you a story in the Wall Street Journal yesterday, I'll tell you about in just a second, that uh, was a, a project that originated, well, it, let, me, let me say it this way. We were doing a lot of fitness stuff. We had Tony Little and we were doing the Jenners, you know, uh, Chris Jenner and, and, and all kinds of fitness stuff. And, and one day Tony Little came in my office and Tony had, had been in an accident. He gained 40 pounds. He looked terrible. And one of the guys there named Carl Deichler, we we're all hanging around and we we're like, you know, hey, Tony, what happened to your beach body? And, uh, you know, you, you gained a little weight. Hey, oh, sorry. You know, I had an accident. Well, Carl Deichler went off and he said, Hey, Kevin, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start my own business. I've, you know, I love the concept of a, getting a beach body yeah. and he started beach body. And so uh, they, I got an, an opportunity to, to join uh, and, and, and have a little equity in that. And I was busy and doing many other things. And I said, Carl, good luck. You're going to do great. You know, and he's, it, and yesterday in the wall street journal, beach body just uh, announced a deal they're doing with a, a SPAC a specialty purpose acquisition corp. And they've got a $3 billion valuation now. So here's a guy, Carl, who worked for me for a number of years back in the day. It's, it's created a $3 billion business. So I'm pretty proud of Carl and what he's done. And, and, um, and hey, you can't be involved in every deal. Um, it's, it's, it's the one that Carl built and, and did very well with. And, I, and I've wished him luck. But hey, it did get away. And maybe I could have gotten in on that one, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, as we're, as we're wrapping up, you know, let's transition and talk about this big event that we've touched on a couple of times, Capital Con, that's coming to Houston in April, April 16th and 17th. Uh, you'll be there alongside some other great speakers, Sherry Lecter, of course, who co-wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki. We got Sir John Sheeran, who was uh, the gentleman, of course, responsible for the Think and Grow Rich movie with your friend Barbara Corcoran and so many other great names like Grant Perdome. But what's the advantage to somebody listening to this? that has not yet made the decision to quote, as I like to say, get in the room. What, what's the real advantage of somebody to attend an event like that and be present with you and all of these other great leaders? I mean, I, I'm gonna, I, you know, I've never told this story, but I'm gonna tell it right now. Um, I, I was looking for a break uh, and, you know, I mentioned my aha moment, right? Right after that aha moment, I, I was, I wanted, I was building a, a, a massive business and I, I wanted to get some exposure. And so I went to an event where the publisher of Entrepreneur Magazine was speaking. Yep. And, and so after he spoke, I went and talked to him and we had a private little cup of coffee. And, and he said, Kevin, I want to do a story on you. And they invited me out to LA and I'll never forget, I'm sitting there and, uh, and, and, and the, the, the guy that was taking the pictures, he says, what did you do to deserve the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine? I'm like, dude, they didn't, what are you talking about? The cover? They didn't tell me they were putting me on the cover. So um, that changed my life. Yeah. This was me at a show listening to somebody speak. It, I mean, 
at, 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 at your event, Brad, you've got some movers and shakers and, you know, hey, I, I, I'm involved, but so are many other people. You can't do it sitting at home. If you don't get out and make it happen, it's not going to happen, okay? I mean, I, 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 that was a game changer. I had an aha moment in my business, but I also, I, I sought mentors in my life and I, I got, I, I built a business that had flatlined and I couldn't raise money because I, I didn't know how to raise money. I'm a marketing guy. So what happened? I've, I've got a mentor that was a former bank president. He got me $3 million in financing. We 10 X the size of the company. You, you, you don't do things sitting at home. If you're not listening to experts, mentors, I wrote the book mentor to millions. And it's all about how to get a mentor, how to be the mentor's best student, how to powerfully make this transition in your life. If you're an entrepreneur, you're going to learn techniques, systems, connections to be able to take you maybe not just to the next level, but to amazing levels. So, um, sometimes it's just that one little break that you need. So many entrepreneurs get to this close and what do they do? They give up. Yeah. And, and this is, this is the time to double down COVID there's opportunities. I mean, I, 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 I just going to say that, you know, here, when COVID first hit, everybody was sticking their head in the sand. What am I going to do? You right. know what I said? What products do people need now? They're at home. They need housewares. They need, you know, fitness. They need tools for hardware because they're going to fix their house up. I doubled down, went back to all my connections, and we're selling massive amounts of these kinds of things all over the place. I mean, here's, I just grab an item. This product I did 15 years ago called the Magic Wrench. Love we it. brought it back. It sold 200,000 pieces on QVC recently, okay? So, I mean, it's you've got to be able to tune into what's going on today. And we're going to be able to show you that by, by coming and hanging out with us. Absolutely. I, you know, it's funny, you know, I look at some of these products and uh, I, I won't say I laugh and I chuckle, but uh, you know, some of them become, like you said, mega million dollar products. Why advertising promotion, branding, you get great names, you get great people around them. And I tell people, if you attend an event like this and just walk away with one great idea, and yes. then back that idea with massive action, it can change your life. One idea back with some effort and action, folks, can make you millions of dollars. Well, great. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Kevin, you've been a wonderful, amazing guest. You've shared lots of great things. One thing we always like to do as we kind of end up the show is ask our guests, what's one quirky thing about Kevin Harrington that most people do not know that you'd be willing to share? Well, let's see. Um, so, oh, I, I am, I, I people... Some people that know me know that, that I golf, okay? And they, they assume I'm a great golfer, okay? I'm not a great golfer. I'm a, I'm, I'm a weekend hack, but I, I've got a 17 handicap, okay? So, I mean, I, I just, you know what? As hard as I work, when I talk about 11-hour days on Zoom, I'm going to do a five-hour day on the golf course. <laughs> I'm going to be out hanging out with buddies, but sometimes there's business people. I mean, Brad, you, you know how it works. Over the last couple of months, there's one socially distant sport that is not a problem because you play golf, you're in your, they now have you in your own cart. You're not touching the rakes. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a COVID friendly sport. I play a couple times a week. I love it. And actually getting a little better as I go, but um, you know, I, I believe you got to work hard and, and have a lot of fun too. And so I think that's um, it's not a business thing that I, you know, that I'm sharing with you, but um um, you know, I think it's just, it, it, it's a fun thing because I believe work hard, but also play hard and have, have some fun in the process. Love it. I, I love golf. I live here in the country club. We get out and we enjoy it every time. And I never looked at it as a COVID friendly sport. You know, maybe a golf club or a golf resort would be the next major investment for some of you sharks. <laughs> there you go. I got you. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for your time. We'll see you in a couple months. This is Brad Blazer. Of course, your host of Beast Nation, everybody. As I love to say, be well, be great, and all of you continue to be prosperous. Thanks, Brad. Thank you.